Hello and welcome back. I'm going to be going over, over my fourth strength hack today, and that is less is more. Especially for anyone that, you know, I used to fall into this trap all the time. I would push it way too hard. I would try to annihilate my muscles. Um, pretty much my first workout, I think me and my best friend in uh, his basement, he had a easy bar and we were just doing sets on sets of uh, bench press. I think we did 16 sets of bench press. Uh, we were following a bodybuilding.com program and it said four sets of bench press and it said four sets of six, eight, eight, and ten or something like that. So we thought that meant you had to do four rounds of those, you know, six, eight, eight, and ten. So yeah, we did 16 sets total and it was really stupid looking back on it now, you know, um, information, it wasn't as readily available. I mean, I'm sure it was. I just didn't really know the proper places to look. And obviously, you know, looking at a bodybuilding magazine that is uh, showing supplements and roided out people all over it, that was probably a really stupid place for a newbie to get training information from. But, you know, um, at least all these stupid things I did taught me some good lessons, and that way I can prevent you guys from making the same mistakes. So getting on to the important stuff, uh, we'll cover the maxing out portion first. Basically, most of the time, you're going to want to keep your maxes to 90 to 93 percent, and this is a concept known as a training max. It's uh, really foolish to go in the gym trying to push a new PR every single week on a, a you know a one rep max. That's a great way to get injured, especially if you're doing the same variation every week. So I say you should just go up to a nice smooth training max, even if you are running conjugate and changing the variations you will get the same benefits, or actually more benefits, due to increased recovery. So, um, doing that lower training max. Well, the main things you wanna look for in a training max, it really helps to record yourself when you're ramping up to C. It should look smooth, and it should be something you can get with good technique. And uh, the recording part really comes in handy for timing your concentric, which is the, you know, when you're squatting or benching, it's when you're at the bottom and you come up, so you're pressing the weight, you know, moving it up. That is the concentric. Bringing it down is the eccentric. You know, it's pretty basic, but not everybody knows that. And you can get away with a three to three and a half concentric on the deadlift just due to the nature of the lift. It moves a hair slower. Now, there are times when you're going to have to push your limits, and that's when you do a competition max, which is 100%. You want to do that roughly two to four times a year. I find that when you do it more than that, you're just going to end up uh, burning out your nervous system and your attempts. You won't be able to bring as much to them because you're draining your overall energy reserves. For best results, when you try out your competition max, it's going to be you want to peak up to it. So you're going to slowly increase the specificity by doing more heavy singles and doubles. You also are going to want to drop your overall volume by decreasing the amount of assistance and accessory work that you're doing. Now I'm going to move on to the next segment, which is lifting calm versus lifting angry. I say you get, you know, you get more out of less. You are gonna to wanna to stay calm for your training maxes as well as your competition maxes on the squat and the bench press due to how technical they are. You don't wanna be all hyped up because it becomes easier to make a mistake and with the squat and the bench press there's really no room for mistakes with very heavy loads. It's um, The deadlift is actually a much less technical lift despite uh, prop popular belief. So. I'd say on a competition maximum deadlift, it's okay to get angry, you know, especially if you're pushing it for some kind of record. You can also get angry on your speed work as well as your top sets of your assistance work. Now, last but not least is the volume work. So for novices and early intermediates, I'd say you're going to want to go up to that RP 8 to 9 range. And if you're a late intermediate or more advanced than that, you're going to want to do RPE 6 seven or eight for most of your work and then once in a while shoot up to that rp nine to ten zone so for novices and advanced lifters they actually need less volume overall the only people who are going to have to do more sets are intermediate lifters and that's just because they are actually used to training because so they can't get away with using low volume like a novice you know someone that's new to training they can just do a few sets, and since that is such a you know a new thing for their body, they're going to adapt at a faster rate. 
Whereas the intermediate, they're already, they've already built up a tolerance to weight, so they have to do more sets. The only reason advanced lifters can't do more sets and more volume is because the weights that they're using are so high that if they added sets, more sets, that their overall tonnage would just become insane and they would bury themselves in a recovery hole. That's all I have time for today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you learned anything or have any questions, just leave a comment down below. Leave your feedback, you know, leave your questions. It really helps the algorithm support my channel and get my message out there to more people. So I'd really appreciate, you know, hitting the like button, the subscribe button, all that jazz. And have a great day.